Zombies are one of the most overused cliches in video games. And yet, there was one game that did zombies right. One game that will always do zombies right. Doesn't matter how many zombie games come after it. This game will have always done zombies right. Because let's face it, after a billion clones, you're kind of not all that excited about Left 4 Dead, are you? Or about pretty much any other zombie game, but, but not Stubbs. Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Pulse is the single greatest zombie game ever made. And it is so for three main reasons. One is that you are not some soldier or survivor or some last first hope of the universe to save the world from zombies or... You're not any of those. You're a zombie. You're not the evil malevolent stalking in the shadows must consume the world with its evil zombie. No, you're, you're stubs. You, you got killed. You somehow woke up. You don't really know what's going on and um, you suddenly find out that, you know, Humans are kind of tasty, aren't they? Yeah. And the game escalates from there. It becomes a marvel. One that didn't have a really big budget. It was made by Wide Load Games, which was founded by a few people. One of them used to work at Bungie. He worked on Halo. He worked on the Myth series. And he wanted to make a studio where you didn't really need to spend, you know, billions and billions. Well, not billions, but you didn't have to break the bank with the budget to make a game that will still sell. And contrary to popular belief, Wide Load did not go bankrupt or anything it was bought out by disney and disney then you know disney did stubs was its first game and it's most successful because i've honestly really not heard much about any of the other ones so that was one reason why stubs the zombie was and still is the greatest zombie game ever made you playing as a zombie the second reason is escalation a way in which stubs really never manages to become stale never manages to outstay its welcome is that it constantly changes things. You begin as a single lonely zombie trying to figure out what happened. Where am I? Why are there robots everywhere? I can't eat robots, can't I? No, I cannot. But the humans, they are tasty. And from there, it escalates. You're not gonna be a lonely zombie for long because you're contagious. You make other zombies. So while in some situations you may be fighting on your own against police, against some scientists with laser weapons. You're gonna make a zombie horde and that zombie horde will attract attention. By the end, you will have started an all-out zombie apocalypse that will bring down the full wrath of the military with fighting in the street, the likes of which you... you wouldn't really see pretty much any zombie game, would you? I mean, the scale of it. It doesn't turn into an RTS if you're wondering, but it's still got a very good sense of scale and escalation. It goes from you as a single lonely zombie to maybe attacking some guy in a hut somewhere in a small house to citywide infestation all out panic mode with soldiers and tanks and the feeling that the stubs may have accidentally ended the world. But he doesn't really care because he's not doing what he's doing out of hate, out of spite, out of wanting to become a zombie overlord no he initially he's just confused and then he just wants love the love of someone that loved them once and they love him again and that leads us to the third reason why Stubbs is so quick it has a superb sense of style and what i mean by style is the way it presents itself and its world in every way graphically it aims to emulate all sorts of old films with a film grain effect that is honestly kind of annoying makes every scene <laughs> darker than it should be and kind of hard to navigate sometimes but it's really not that much of a complicated game so it, it works the soundscape it creates is superb the zombies moaning the people running and complaining that they're being eaten by zombies it's great and it's backed up by exceptional music it's 50s 60s music somewhere around there that's reinterpreted with more modern tonalities or well, modern for 2005 but they still sound like old-timey type songs enjoyable songs upbeat cheerful songs that really clash with the idea that you're playing a brain-eating zombie i'd let you list some of the songs because they are superb they, they are excellently chosen for what they must be but if i do let you hear the songs a copyright bot will murder me in my sleep 
I'm not joking. I used to have clones. They're all dead now. Ask the people that used to watch me at Games Arena. I had a bunch of clones. None of them left. And from that juxtaposition of upbeat music, happy, cheerfulness, and zombies, there came a sense of humor. A sense of humor that is pretty much founded on the idea of mixing two things that shouldn't really be mixed together. You have a game that's set around, well, it's an old-timey America, somewhere around the 1960s or 50s, in a town called Punch Bowl in the USA. But it's the most technologically advanced town in the nation because of the work of the all-American and a very patriotic scientist who is a German Nazi defector <laughs> that still has a bit of a Nazi completely off the rails I am going to take over the world kind of uh, vibe to him. Punchbowl is a kooky town. It's filled with robots. You've got barbershop quartets with jetpacks armed acting as guards who will sing while fighting you. At one point you have to... Uh, you have to you have to defeat somebody in a dance off which is quick time event driven so it was only all that super but hey it was it was right and the jokes kept coming the situations changed it, it it's a game that did not waste time which is good because it did have some problems uh, i actually don't know if this was certainly a problem back then but the version i have now certainly has a few issues with controls uh, any special ability you want to use is delayed for example if you want to throw your pancreas at people so it'll explode you gotta mash right click like five times for stubs to realize oh you want me to reach into my abdomen grab my pancreas and throw it at somebody oh, okay you can also detach your head and roll it around like a bowling ball infecting and knocking over people or you can you know Stubbs, uh, he's been dead for almost 30 years, but he still has intestines and the thing that's in there, whatever it is, the putrid remains of whatever it is he ate or whoever he ate, when released, well, when processed and then released in forms of vapor, that will outright stun any enemy that's next to you, leaving them completely open to be devoured. And if push came to shove, apart from being able to rip off your own head and then come up with another one, you as a zombie have regenerative abilities, but they don't extend to uh, actual regenerating what's already been <laughs> removed by mother nature over the course of time. You can remove your hand and it will move around under your control, clinging to walls like it was a small little xenomorph or thing from the Adams family, and you can shove it into people's brains and control them like puppets. You can even use guns that way and shoot people in the face instead of eating them. Though if you do shoot them in the face or if you shoot with their fancy laser blaster guns so much that they overheat and will explode, if you do any of that they won't be turned into zombies because you know they died of natural causes not because you sucked out their brains or you ripped off their arm you can rip off people's arms and beat them with it it's a game that's truly fun and you're probably wondering wow that, that sounds amazing why am i only seeing such a small portion of it on, on the background did you get lazy and didn't play all of it again well, I actually couldn't get the game. It's not on sale. Uh, there were some issues, I think, with the DRM it had. And also, I think the licensing for the music may have gone poof. So you can't buy it anywhere anymore, which sucks. But the demo is still out there. And that's what you're seeing in the background. That's the demo. It's... It's a very, very small demo, I would say. At best, it's 30 minutes of gameplay in which uh, Stubbs rides in on a sheep and then proceeds to try and relieve himself and punch bowls water supply because he really wanted to find a bathroom and to be fair it's it's one of the scientists that given the idea of you know relieving himself in the uh, the water supply and he will go on to do a lot of crazy stuff for the course of the several days in which he plunges the city of punch bowl into other chaos to the point where it i won't give you any spoilers but it <laughs> It ends very dramatically. And even so, even though it is a story about a zombie wrecking stuff up, it still has heart. It still has emotion in it. It still has characters. And Stubbs himself is a character. He's brainless, he can't talk, he really doesn't seem to be able to tie his own shoes. He'll probably eat them. But you can see the gears turning in his head with how he thinks, with how he wants to achieve. It's very, very simple objectives. But again, a game is very much a comedy. I mean, it is a place that's 
filled with robots. Really kind of asshole robots who you kind of get the sense that they're, they're capable of doing more than they're programmed to, but they won't really lift a finger to help humans against the zombies unless you outright attack them, and they are a good source of comedy all throughout. I can't really see where you can go and get the game because I didn't find it, but if you do find it, you absolutely play it. To make it clear, it's not the greatest game ever made, but as a zombie game, it is still funky fresh and totally awesome. The fact that we haven't had anything like it is downright sad. It doesn't even need to be with zombies. Make it, I don't know, an alien parasite infestation thing maybe. Look, come to think of it, I guess the, the closest thing possible that we did have was maybe prototype because it too has that sense of escalation to it only there is no permanence in what you make like you can make infested people of your own to go and attack others and so you know I guess, I guess that rules our prototype too it just goes to show that there can be more done in the zombie genre than what we've been doing for the past 10 years since The Walking Dead became famous. And this was made in 2005, before the zombie craze even existed. This was a game made because somebody loved zombie movies, the old zombie movies, with Romero's Dawn of the Dead and Dead of the Dead and something of the something dead. This wasn't done as a cash, it was made even before Dead Rising. And that makes it so completely non-derivative that it makes pretty much every other zombie game just seem derivative. The ones in the last decade at least. You kind of wish that somebody would try at least remake it, but the rights are now I guess in the hands of Aspire or Aspire, I don't know how you pronounce their name. Or maybe Disney has it, but I think it may be Aspire. I would like a sequel. I would like any game to try and do something similar to Stop the Zombie. And who knows, maybe someday we'll get it. Until then, give Rebel Without a Pulse a chance. If you find it, absolutely play it. You will never regret it. Oh, but one thing absolutely do, change the executable's name to codsp.exe because the game is made to run with OpenGL and it sort of breaks the limitations of what OpenGL, that version of OpenGL should do. So it can't actually run on modern systems, but hey, guess what? Because COD is a more popular game and breaks the same limitations, Video card drivers are hard coded to let COD break those limitations, to let COD SP.exe break them. But since nobody gave a crap about Stubbs, Stubbs won't run by default. No, you have to change its name. My god, if that isn't just the meaning as hell, I. Uh, well, to be fair, the first COD did have an okay campaign, so. But still, I mean. Yeah, no, nobody plays stubs now because you can buy it, but come on, at least make the video driver detect that the game is trying to do something and maybe ask the player if it's okay. Don't just hard crash it. That's not nice. And put it back on sale, whoever owns it, please. I want to go back to Punchbowl, the town where, as the song goes, is the place where I want to fall in love. Goodbye. I've never been to Rome. The outside, the outside world. world's not what I'm thinking of. I'm happy just to stay. I'm home. happy just to stay in my new futuristic home. Cause Punchbowl's where I want to fall in love. To fall